In this example, we're going to do an analysis of the velocity and shear stress distribution at the inlet of a conduit. So this is a picture of what that flow distribution is expected to look like uh, from a textbook. The velocity distribution is uniform right here at the, at the inlet, right where the flow first enters the pipe. And then as it progresses downstream, the flow is really stationary right along the walls of the pipe. A boundary layer develops and the flow down here uh, is a parabolic distribution. And so there's some distance here, the hydro, hydrodynamic entrance length uh, that it takes for the flow to go from this uniform distribution to this parabolic uh, velocity distribution. So we're going to set up a model and take a look at how this develops and what some of the controls are. So I set up a model to do this. It's uh, called laminar flow between plates, plates entrance effect. And I'll go through it here briefly. The model has some uh, parameters in the global definitions, viscosity, VISC, and average velocity. And the model itself is really quite simple. I don't have any definitions. And the geometry is simply a rectangle where uh, it's one centimeter in this dimension and 0.1 meters, uh, 10 centimeters in this direction. So we're using a meter scale and 0.01 would be one centimeter. So that's the geometry. And in this material, in this model, I've uh, introduced the material water. And so what I did was to uh, select uh, materials and go here to add this material and let's see, if I right click and go to open material browser, if I just go here to built in, scroll down, there's water. And uh, if I select that by pressing plus, then I add that material to the model. And it's already added, so it should show up there. Okay, then if I expand the laminar flow the, for the physics of this problem, I selected uh, laminar flow uh, from the fluid flow um, physics interfaces. These are the three defaults, and we're just uh, keeping all of those. The fluid properties, um, I, in this case, used the um, fluid properties, density, and dynamic viscosity uh, from material. This is the default and because I have selected the material right here for water then the uh, uh, density and viscosity that are in the database are used. So that's the setup for fluid properties. The inlet, this is the inlet boundary here and so I selected it and there are a couple of choices that I can have for an inlet boundary. They're shown here. So I can either specify something about the velocity at the inlet or the pressure. And what I'm using here is specifying the velocity and the normal inflow velocity here is checked and I'm using the variable name average velocity which I've specified up here as a parameter. This will, this will require that the velocity along this surface that is perpendicular to this surface is all equal to this value, that it's uniform and equal to this value. I have other choices though. I could specify just the pressure here um, or this laminar inflow case will allow me to um, specify the distribution of the uh, flow being equal to what would occur uh, in a fully developed laminar uh, flow case. And then I have a couple of other options as well. So I'm picking this velocity distribution, basically a normal uh, or a, a, a uniform velocity normal to the boundary as my condition. At the outlet, I'm just going to specify the pressure 
uh, equal to zero and then no viscous stress. So the mesh here is uniform and if I, or is the mesh here is, it's not uniform actually, uh, it's um, fairly dense mesh and this is the default though that I get when I use a physics controlled mesh. So the code knows that it's a laminar fluid flow problem and it adjusts the size of a mesh based on those physics. So I'm just using a default stationary study and when I run it this model runs really quite quickly even though the mesh is fairly dense it runs quickly and this is what you see when the model is solved this is the velocity distribution and you can see right here there's an entrance uh, effect where the velocity changes and but once we get back down here it looks like the velocity is fairly uniform so that's this entrance distribution is really what we're interested in here and so to show this I've made several profiles and let's take a look here at the data sets so I've generated several types of data sets for showing the uh, results so I have what I'm calling transverse profiles so they're transverse to the flow they're perpendicular to the flow and I've set it up here where I specify a line for the profile but then also I'm using this capability here to generate lines that are parallel to this initial line so I can take a look at it if I plot it this is what I've got and what I'm doing is specifying this line here and then using this format where I generated it here using a start point, a stop point, and a step. Um, I generate the um, these different profiles. One thing that I should point out is the way this seems to work is if you start at zero and end at 0.05, um, it this is this is where I'm the, the, the this is the profile that I specify here at x of 0.05 and then this specification causes the cross sections to be made going in this direction um, rather I, I thought it should be going in this direction but in fact it goes backwards so just keep that in mind always plot it up to make sure you have these profiles in the place where you you expect them to be so I have um, a set of profiles that are um, starting at the inlet. I made another set of transverse profiles. This one here, and if I plot it up, then it's essentially the same, but I reduce the number, and so I don't have a profile right here at the inlet. And then I also have some longitudinal profiles. This is a longitudinal profile right down the center of the conduit, and I have another longitudinal profile that is right along the wall okay so that's gonna allow me to take a look at the uh, basically to slice up this uh, velocity distribution into some plots and so the results are shown here this is the velocity fluid velocity transverse to the flow so the um, position is color-coded this blue one is right at the inlet so we specified a velocity of 0 0.001 and you can see what that uh, distribution is like that's just basically what we gave it and then we go downstream uh, I think it's two and a half millimeters and we get this uh, profile and another two and a half and so on and so you can see once we go down one two three about the fourth profile then uh, the profiles really are all the same. Okay, so if I expand this out, I can also show that the, the plots that we're seeing here are just the velocity u along those profiles, but I'm also including the analytical solution, uh, which is given here, and that's shown as this dashed line. So we're able to show uh, where the profiles become equal to the analytical solution and um, 
And that's basically where the flow is stabilized. So we can also do this. Well, let's just take a look at the, um, the fluid velocity along the axis. So this is um, right along the center line of the conduit. And we can see the fluid velocity starts at 0 0.01 and then it increases and reaches then a value of 0 0.0015. Uh, and it does that in right about here. That's like, that's a little bit less than uh, 0.01. Uh, and we could change the scale. I think if we uh, blow this up and use a, a bit of a different x-axis scale, so instead of going to 0.1, if we go maybe to 0 0.02, we can see a little bit better. Oh, it should be 0 0.02. Yeah, so we can see that it's coming up and kind of bouncing around, but once it gets to right about here, maybe 0 0.01, maybe 0 0.009, um, then it's essentially the same after that. Okay, so we can do the same thing with the shear stress. The shear stress right at the inlet is shown here. I um, I truncated the, uh, the the range. This shear stress actually gets very high. Um, so we've got high shear stress along the walls right at the right at the inlet. Uh, but once we go one, two, about the third, I mean, that pink is a little bit, you can see the, the curvature on it a little bit. But once we get to like that blue line, then essentially it's just a straight line across. And we have this linear distribution of shear stress with distance across the conduit, which is what we expect. So we see the entrance effect um, giving us high shear stresses right along the walls and uh, that effect diminishing with distance. And we can also plot the shear stress longitudinally along the wall. It's shown here and you can see now the scale. We have these very high shear stresses along the wall. This is, the, this is where the highest shear stresses occur. And the very highest ones occur right along the wall at the inlet of the conduit, and then they drop off. And if we blow up the scale here, and I want to do the axis. So if we blow this up to um, say zero one, we see that the shear stress it kind of stabilizes right in here. So it's stabilizing at about 0 0.007, which is a little bit upstream from where the shear or where the um, velocity at the center line stabilizes.